Throughout the centuries, a special priestly ministry was given to the church by Jesus Christ. It has the power and authority to cast away demons. In this age of science and technology, there's not a lot of room for the supernatural. But when psychiatry is unable to provide respite and scientific analysis has no answers either, that's when people turn to the church for help. In this special episode, we introduce you to Father Cesar Trucui, a professional exorcist. Father Cesar, thank you so much for joining us thank today. Thank you for your invitation. Thank you. Is there still a need to know about exorcism today? Of course. We have, uh, I can say that we have an increase of needs of uh, exorcists around the world because, for example, in the place I'm living now in Switzerland, just imagine that I just last week received a phone call from a person from Germany that needs to come and speak with me because she doesn't find an exorcist in Germany. The other week, I had people coming, calling me from, from Switzerland, from another diocese, that they don't have exorcists. I had people coming from Italy or Lausanne, close to France, because I'm an exorcist. So if it was a possibility that you have more priests form on this issue, obviously appointed by their bishop, then you will not have people traveling around the world to find one priest to give them blessings. So I, I think that uh, the formation, the ongoing formation of priests on this issue is important. How do you become an exorcist? By the grace of God and by chance also. At the beginning, when I came here to Rome to study and to finish my studies, well, the first one, and was ordained priest, I was invited to uh, uh, to direct this exorcism course. I'm, I'm speaking about the year 2004. And uh, since the very beginning, that uh, make or gave me the opportunity to be in touch with the most important exorcists here in Rome, like Father Gabriela, Gabriele Amort. He was very famous here in Italy. I had the chance to work with him for four years. And, uh, for example, Father uh, Bamonte, Francesco Bamonte, that he actually is the president of the International Association of Exorcists. So I had the chance to get in touch with this and other exorcists and gave me the opportunity of, of being involved with this beautiful ministry. So at the beginning I was just helping out. But when I was appointed missionary priest for a community, Italian community in Switzerland, and I went out from Rome. I, I was actually contacted the first week when I was there by an Austrian person that knew about myself because internet, you know, they mm -hmm. look my name and uh, just, yeah. you put exorcism and he found Cesar Trucchi and, uh, and he needed an exorcism. So I asked my bishop and he appointed me to be an exorcist. So that's the way I enter into this reality since the very beginning of the priesthood. Tell me something, what qualities does a priest have to have in order to be, let's say, a successful exorcist? I think you need uh, different qualities and if, above all those that are presented in the ritual of exorcism. You need a pious man, that means a man of prayer. You need uh, a learned person, a priest, so he need to study, he need to study theology. He needs to study psychology also, it's very helpful. The more he studied, the best. And the other issue that presents the ritual is moral integrity. So put it in one word, a holy man. How exactly do you recognize if a person is possessed? They might believe they are possessed, but how could they perhaps otherwise be perhaps just mentally unstable. How do you do that? It's a very good question because actually it's the most important thing uh, when we speak about exorcism. That is called uh, the understanding if the person is possessed or no. It's called uh, the discernment of spirits to understand it. So a good knowledge of psychology and a little bit of psychiatry uh, it will help out a lot of the priests. So 
normally, I, me as an exorcist, I, I like to speak with a person that think that she or he is possessed. And he, with a normal dialogue, I ask the person to, to speak to me, to tell me what is he experiencing, why he's there, why he think or she uh, is possessed, what happened, okay? And I will be trying to discover two things. He realized that there was something wrong. He touched me out here, and this guy took him with one hand, and he was able to raise him up and throw him away. They might believe they are possessed, but how could they perhaps otherwise be perhaps just mentally unstable? How do you do that? Okay, and I will be trying to discover two things. The first thing is what the ritual tells the priest the signs that he should be looking for. The first sign, there are four signs, three on the ritual. The first is an extraordinary strength uh, above its nature. And I give you an example. Um, I remember this first case I, I participated with. Uh, is a Frenchman. Now he is freed from the devil. He's not possessed anymore, thanks be to God. And he told me that he realized that he was possessed uh, because there was, he was on a retreat and he was praying and in a certain moment he, he entered into trance and there was a friend of his next to, next to him, beside him, that he realized that there was something wrong. He touched him you know, here and this guy took him with one hand and he was able to raise him up and throw him away. Impossible for a human being to do that. It's physically impossible. So in that moment, his friend told him, you know, there's something wrong happening here. So we saw, or he saw, an extraordinary strength. Okay, this is one of the signs. The second sign is what is called the knowledge of hidden things or far away things. And I give you an example that I, I met this woman, this one woman that I have exor been exercising in Switzerland. She had a vision when she was receiving a blessing by another priest. And this vision, uh, in this vision she saw the house of her dad, that is here in Italy, that in the, we called it blue room. In the blue room, under the desk, there was a bag with uh, guts, animal guts. So when the priest finished the blessing, she called right away to her uh, sister in Italy. She's living in, uh, in uh, Zurich uh, and asked him, can you go to the blue room and see if there's a white bag with guts under the desk? And so his brother went, her, bro see, her brother went, and, uh, and he didn't find it. And then she said, can you ask my dad if there was something like that? And, she said, and he said, okay. And then he went to talk to his dad and ask him about that. And he said, yes, I have that back. But today I took it away from, it, uh, from there because I cooked these things to give it to feed the dogs. So we have this person, that, this woman, that was able to see something that really happened in her house a day ago. Um, in a completely different country, far away, that she would otherwise not have known Then uh, 7, 700 miles away. It was just impossible for a normal person to understand that. So that's a second uh, case. It's being able to, vi to see something, visualizing something, okay. Exactly, and the third one is uh, to speak languages, uh, dead languages, Aramaic, um, Greek, for example, or to know um, Arabic without never studying it, for example, or speaking it. The fourth sign that is not on the, on the book is the, um, the frighten of the sacred things. So the Eucharist, I'm, when I, that, that's very normal also. When you have some, somebody that is possessed, can, they cannot enter into a church. They feel uneasy, they don't want to be there. So it's called in Italian, aversione al sacro, is the rejectal of the sacred things. So these are the four signs that I will be looking for in one hand. On the other- But you don't have to have all four. No. Right. No, no, no. Okay. 
And on the other hand, I, I am looking for or to understand if this person was, uh, has to deal with something with, with magic, with sorcery, with, uh, with fortune tellers, with the Ouija board, something that has to do with magic, black magic or sorcery. No? So the more elements that you have, the easier for the exorcist that he will be able to understand if the person is or not possessed. How do you know when you've been successful as an exorcist? Ha! Huh. I know that I'm always successful in the sense that it's not me. It's God. That is God always successful. Every blessing is efficacious. Every blessing gives, uh, <laughs> gives freedom to the person. But unfortunately, not all the exorcism or during every exorcism, the person will be freed away from the devil. Sometimes you need years of a weekly or monthly blessings to the person that the person will be uh, liberated. But the number of exorcisms in Italy have tripled, apparently. Mm -hmm. Is that so in other countries too, in the States as well? And if so, why? What's happening? Uh, we can think that this number is increasing, but just what you said that it has tripled, because we have, I'm speaking on, on uh, Italy and uh, Switzerland, for example, then I go to the United States, because they, they, we have an increase of exorcist in the diocese. Not all the dioceses have an exorcist, but we have some dioceses that they have increased their numbers. If we have an increment of, of exorcists, it's because there's a need. So uh, some dioceses have triplicated the numbers of their exorcists, and that's why. Actually, when I arrived to, uh, to Switzerland, there was only one exorcist. In the whole country? No, in my diocese. In your diocese. Uh, but then uh, when I arrived, I was appointed, so we have two, and now we have a third and a fourth one in the diocese. But in a week, how many people come to you saying they're possessed? It's, uh, in a week. Just put it, since I'm living in a small uh, village in Switzerland, I have one once a week, every 10 days, that ask me, that calls me, that get in touch with me. For a priest living in the mountains, that's a lot. And you have some that you do one session and they're okay? Or no, that doesn't it's happen. ongoing? It's an ongoing uh, prayer. What advice do you give to someone who feels that they are possessed? What should they do? They should go to a priest, for sure, okay? Uh, if they're really into it his parish priest will uh, bring them to an exorcist if they have in the diocese. If you are speaking of a person that probably they think that they may have something um, and they don't want to go to a priest, I will just tell them, okay, just live a good Christian life. Go to Mass every Sunday. Take communion if you can. And if you can, go to confess and then take communion. Pray every day. Try to be away from the sources of evil. Don't play the Ouija board, don't go to sorcerers or fortune tellers, you know. Try to be closer to the light. Children can be possessed too. Yes. How do you explain that? How does God allow that to happen to innocent children? God, since the beginning of creation, wanted all intellectual being to be free. Otherwise, it's not possible for me to love God. If I'm not free to love God, I am Obliged to love him is not, is not love. It's, I'm not free. I'm obliged to do it, okay? In this sense, God has permitted the action of the devil. Okay, my final question, of course, is how do you perform an exorcism? And there's a ritual. You start with page one and you continue. Okay, can you just walk me through the steps that you would possibly do if I were to be someone who is possessed? Okay, the first thing that I have to do is to speak to you and to understand uh, the signs that would tell me that you are possessed or no. And also, if you have been dealing with uh, esoteric realities or going to sorcerers or any type of black magic or anything. So once I understand that probably you may be possessed because I, in, with the sign that I, uh, that I have discovered in you, 
I will go to an exorcism. And um, I can tell you one thing. If I invite you to a true exorcism, you will be disappointed because you will not be f seeing people flying around, heads going around. Yeah, you can listen people speaking in tongues. They can be shouting, they can be, you know, nervous. But normally all, all the things that we have seen on the movie The Right or The Exorcist, those things are very difficult to happen in normal exorcisms, okay? Something happens, but not all of them, okay? So if I have to go to an exorcism, above all, I need these four elements. This, this is the stall. It has to be uh, viola. How do you say viola? Purple. Purple, thank you. So you need a stall because the stall means this, the uh, priestly power that Christ has entrusted to the church. And the stall has to be very long, very big, because then you will need to put it at the beginning. You don't have to put it, but then in a certain moment of the right, you have to put it over the shoulder of the person, just like a sign of, of, uh, of the uh, sacramental power and the priestly power that is coming over you. It's like an, an embracing you. And this is set in the right, okay? So at the beginning, excuse me, at the beginning I have to pull the stall, then I will take holy water, this is the second element that we have. This is exercise water inside here. Uh, the priest, any priest can make an, exor uh, an exorcism upon the water. So the first thing is I do is to put some holy water upon you, making a prayer. I put it on myself, and then if you have people around, um, I will bless them all, asking the, our guardian angels to protect us, asking God to protect us, obviously, uh, the Virgin Mary, okay? The third element... What language do you do it in? I make it in, uh, always Latin. in Latin. The third element is this crucifix, any type of crucifix. The priest can have it in his hand, you know, and put it on the back of the person or on the head of the person. Um, normally, I, I give it to the person. You can take it. It's blessed by Father Amorth before he died. And uh, normally, for example, when I have a person that um, she has a great stomach ache during the exorcism, uh, I don't like touching people much. So I tell this person, put the crucifix in the part that you feel the pain, in the belly, in the head but the person will do it, okay? So I give the crucifix to the person. Because and pain often happens during an exorcism? It can happen, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes, normally us or it's in the stomach or it's in the head. Okay. okay. And also I have my hands free because I need one hand free. Well, both hands free. Uh, this is the, the ritual. Uh, this is the new one in Latin from the Vatican. No? So here we have the Ritus Exorcismi Maior. So you start reading this and you start praying. I ask the person to pray inside because the person will start experiencing the fight of the devil inside. I remember this man that told me, you know, Father, when I'm enduring exorcism, I, I feel that inside of me it it's was like a, a, a ground battle, a field battle. One side God, one side the devil, and they start fighting and, and shouting, and I feel the devil, and all the demons inside, they start shouting and, and screaming, and the force of devil, of, of God, inside of me. And so he told Father, I pray. When I'm, I'm there inside him, I'm like, I'm like somebody that I'm seeing that, but inside of me. So I have to pray. So I tell people, pray. So I take this ritual, or this other one, this is the ancient one from, uh, from the 17th century, um, and also it's in Latin, and I take it. How do you choose what you're going to read of that? And there's a ritual. You start with page one, and you continue. So in, the, in this sense, that's what I told you. If I invite you to an exorcism, you will be absolutely disappointed. You wanted to see, I don't know what, and you, you see nothing, okay? So you start like this. There's a song, Nerriminiscari Domine Delicta Nostra. So don't, don't forget me and don't think about my miseries, but be with me, you know? And then you have this part that tells you, pray, pray the Our Father, excuse me, pray the Our Father in secret, until et nenos inducat. So I start 
you know, I put blessed water. Then we all make the sign of the cross in the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I say this little psalm, and then in silence. And when I arrive this, et nenos inducas in tentationem, et libranos a malo. And then we have this psalm. And so I just have to read it. I just have to pray it. When you have a person possessed, they start. <coughs> <coughs> right away. Right away. You just read. You just follow. It's like celebrating Mass. Then you, if you can read this, de in the muniat et obsessum signo crucis, then put uh, yourself under the sign of the cross, imponen extremam partem stolam, coloeus, put the extreme part of the stole in her neck, put it please. So it's written here, I don't invent anything. And then with a lot of faces, contentant en mania cum fide dicat. So this is to the priest, and with a lot of faith start this. And then exorciso te creatura diaboli, etc. Uh, exorciso te in mundissime spiritus omnis in curso adversarie, e via dicendo, uh, and, and going on. And in, a certain, in certain moments, you have these crosses. So mm -hmm. normally, you can, you can put, while praying this, so I have this right in my, man, in my hand, in left hand. Impectore in fronte. Exactly. So uh -huh. when it says in pectore, in fronte, et titerum, in fronte, I'm reading and I'm praying, so I have to make the sign of the cross in fronte, and then in pectore, I don't go to the pectore, I go here, mm -hmm. okay? Oh, but I don't, I don't want problems with anybody, so I do it up here, but it's in pectore, no? in pectore. <laughs> uh, and then all the sign of the cross that we have around here are done upon the person. You can do it on the head, or you can do it on the back. Okay, I give a recommendation to exorcists. Don't touch too much. Girls, please. Avoid yourself problems. Um, and always, um, if you have a girl, always be with somebody with you. Be with, a, with older people. If you have a woman, uh, invite women to be with you praying. I have my group of old people. 60, 70 year old people. They come and they help they you with the exorcism. They will be around me okay. and they will be praying uh, the rosary or Hail Marys or whatever they want on silence. They are looking at me, you know, are looking at us. And I want them to be not only to be with me with prayer, but also as testimony and witness that I'm not doing anything. Okay. It's important. Okay? It's the year 2018. Right? Exactly. Okay. Uh, then. When we're done, at the end, you have to, you can, I can take it also. That one. <coughs> there was no exorcism, okay? Then at the end, you can, you should ask the devil some of the questions. And we can find them here. The question that you have to make the devil to understand how he came into the possession of the person. You always have to ask this at the end. Mm -hmm. And he always answers. <laughs> Not always. I remember. Uh, in nomine Jesu precipio tibi is the Latin. No? In, no, in, the nome di Je in the name of Jesus Christ, I order you to give you to give me your name. No, never. In the name of Jesus Christ, I order you to give you, give me your name. I will never tell you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I order you to give. My so, it, it's a fight. Okay. It's, it's sometimes it's funny. But the person doesn't realize that they're speaking this way until it's, after. Sometimes they could be a little bit conscious, sometimes they will not. But you say it's always successful, but they can be possessed for years. Mm -hmm. Why a possession can last for so long time and why uh, an exorcism, just an, uh, one exorcism cannot cast the devil out? Why? because it's not a sacrament. It's a sacramental prayer, and there's a difference. It's the, the church around you that needs to pray, the holiness of this and the sanctity of the church that is within you. Also, the sanctity of the priest is important in an exorcism, the, the willingness of the person that wants to be freed out. So that's why an exorcism is not efficacious, just a sacrament is, because it's not a sacrament. It's a sacramental prayer. I have to, to be honest. 
when I was not an exorcist, and I used to go at the beginning with exorcist or with Father Amort, at the beginning, I, I, I just look at them and say, they are somebody special, you know, something special is in them. Now that I'm an exorcist, I say, there's nothing, nothing special. We're not just regular guys, you're normal guys. The more normal you are, the better, okay? <laughs> I, you have to be normal, 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 normal. Great, thank you. Father Trukui emphasized to us repeatedly that exorcists are very normal people. That may well be so, but they certainly have extraordinary God-given powers. <laughs>